So this is called a water seller, a high class moor. And what this was, was a moor that sold the tourist water. You know, moors didn't pay water bills back in the days because they owned the water. So when the Europeans would come, you know, the moors would sell them water. Furthest west of Islam. Now within this article, it speaks of Maghrib al being the furthest west. The moors, the Puritans of the Mohammedans. Even Tangier, little touched by European influences. A medieval land close to a British stronghold. The two marketplaces. And they're speaking about the exact center of east and west. Tangier, September 4th, the Moors have frequently been called the Puritans of Islam, whereas most educated Turks and many Persians, Egyptians, and Indian Mohammedans have adopted the European style of dress, but not a single Moor live, living within the borders of his own country has laid aside his cloak-like, you know, his Moors clothes. In the streets of Tangier, the city most infested with Christians. There is not a tramway or hackery cab. With this exception of a few kilometers of narrow gauge mining railway, not an iron track penetrates the country anywhere. There is neither a telegraph nor a postal service, and except for the discredited ex-Sultan Abdul Aziz, because you know him and his brother is going back and forth, not a not a more has designed to test the inventions of Europe, which they scorn. It seemed extraordinary that such a country, the Maghrib al as the Arabs say, are the furthest west of Islam, should lie across the narrow strait of Gibraltar. Now, I'll leave the link in the description so you can go over the whole article, but I just wanted to show you where they were speaking of Maghrib al and the far west of Islam. Also in the article, it speaks of Soko Chico, which is the the exact line that is the closest between east and west, and it's located in Fez. So I hope you enjoyed the short reading as far as Maghrib Alaxa, the far west of Islam. So Islam.